everyone's heard of no mow may. And even the idea of not mowing at all or mowing at longer intervals. The idea behind all of these is to increase the number of flowers available to pollinators in areas where they might not have access to many. While it sounds good, are the flowering plants that normally pop up in a suburban lawn when you reduce mowing good for pollinators? Are there invasive species that often pop up? Is there something better that can be done instead? Well, we are about to find out. To make this more fun, I'm gonna use a tier list to rank our lawn weed species. Many of you already know how this works, but for those of you that don't, there are six tiers the plant can fall into. S, A, B, C, D, and E. S is the best of the best, the superior level. A through E are just like school grades, where A is awesome and E is excrement. I've picked 11 common lawn weeds. Yes, 11, it's a nice prime number. And because of the impending release of the This Is Spinal Tap sequel, I know you all are looking forward to. I know I am. I chose the species on the list by looking over a bunch of lawn care websites to see what weeds they kept mentioning. Each species is gonna be judged on six criteria. Is it a host plant? Does it provide nectar? Does it provide pollen? Is it used by pollen specialist bees? Is it a native species? Is it invasive? Let's jump right into the tier list with a very well-known lawn flower. The dandelion, Taraxacum officinale, which I think we are all familiar with. Let's find out if all those memes about the pollinator benefits of dandelions are true or not. Well, it is a host plant to some generalist species of Lepidoptera and it does provide nectar to native bees, honeybees, and some butterflies. But we need to talk about its pollen. While bees, both native and honeybees, do collect pollen from dandelions, it is very low quality. The protein content of dandelion pollen is around 14%, and bees are not capable of sustaining brood on it. So I consider the pollen score for dandelions half a point at best, and there are also no pollen specialists that use it. Dandelions aren't native and are considered invasive in some circumstances. Looks like we got two boxes checked. One for being a host plant, one for providing nectar, half a box for pollen, and minus a half for being invasive. That means I'm gonna put dandelion down here in the D tier. Not so good. Next we'll go with another yellow flower, golden ragwort, Pacara aria. There are several Pacara species that may show up in a lawn, but they are all very similar in the qualities we are judging in this video. Golden ragwort is native and therefore by definition can't be invasive when growing within its native range. It is also a host plant for several moths, including the gem moth, supplies nectar and pollen to a wide range of pollinators, and supports pollen specialist native bees. Wow, all boxes checked. Golden ragwort lives up to its name, earns a gold medal, and goes straight into the S tier. All that, and it's a great looking plant too. If you love learning about the flowers in your lawn and how they can benefit pollinators, pretend that like button is a patch of golden ragwort and pollinate that like button. Another lawn flower we are all familiar with is good old white clover, Trifolium repens. This is a non-native plant that is considered invasive in some locations, but it tends to encroach into highly degraded sites. You know, like your lawn. So I don't worry much about it invading the turf grass monoculture around a house. White clover is used as a host plant by several of the sulfur butterflies and does provide nectar and pollen to both native bees, honey bees, and some smaller Lepidoptera. There are no pollen specialist native bees that use it, however. White clover ranks a little bit higher than dandelion, and I'm going to put it in the C tier. The mock strawberry, Potentilla indica, is another non-native, invasive species that is present in just about every low mow lawn I have ever looked at. It spreads fast by runners and can absolutely take over an area. On top of that, it isn't a host plant, doesn't provide pollen to any extent that matters, and no pollen specialist use it. All it does is offer a bit of nectar that is foraged by a small assemblage of flower flies and smaller native bees. Even the bright red fruits are often ignored by wildlife. Overall, mock strawberry has little to offer and can quickly overwhelm a yard. As you can see, mock strawberry scores poorly, and I'm gonna put it straight into the E tier. I did a video covering our native strawberries where I also go in depth on the mock strawberry. I'll put a link to that in the description. Next up is a native species, or rather an entire genus, the fleabanes, the origeron species. These daisy-like flowers are quite common in lawns that have been unmown for a bit. Fleabanes are host plants to several species of caterpillars, provide both nectar and pollen to a variety of pollinators, are sought out by pollen specialist bees, 
and as I already said, they are native and by definition can't be invasive. Looky there, another perfect score and another S-tier plant. Flea banes are an often overlooked pollinator powerhouse, and I did a video all about them that I will link in the description. When it comes to mowing less, there are lots of ways it can be done. There is of course no mow may, which covers a set period. There is interval mowing where you mow every so many weeks, and then there is just no mowing at all during the growing season. So which one's best? It can get a little confusing, and there isn't time to deep dive into it in this video. But Shannon did a blog all about no mow may, and one on interval mowing, and I'll link both of those in the description. Time for another non-native, highly invasive species, ground ivy, Glaucoma heteraceae. This is a plant that seems to pop up in every lawn, even the ones getting routine herbicide treatments for weeds. It isn't a host plant, but does provide nectar. There is debate on whether its pollen is accessible to most species of bees, so it isn't the best pollen source. Not surprisingly, there are no native pollen specialist bees that rely on it. On top of all that good news, it is also allelopathic. It is toxic to the plants around it. I always thought the genus of ground ivy, glaucoma, sounded like some kind of cancer. And that is pretty much what ground ivy is in the native plant communities of North America. It spreads quickly from stolons, creeping stems that lie along the ground and produce new plants wherever they take root, and inhibits other plants as it goes with its allelopathic chemicals. If left alone, it will completely take over and form a monoculture. Ground ivy is something you do not want in your yard. Obviously, I'm gonna stick it in the E tier because there's no place lower to put it. I'm gonna combine a couple of species for this next one because they're both in the same genus and they have very similar appearance and growth habits. Hinbit and dead nettle, the lamium species. These are winter annuals and among the first plants to bloom in the late winter and early spring. Their purple blooms are often seen carpeting fallow ag fields. While they produce a ton of early flowers, they are not host plants, are not native, and are sometimes considered invasive. But like clover, they tend to encroach into highly degraded areas like ag fields or your yard. They do provide nectar and pollen, but are not visited by pollen specialist bees. Overall, they are okay for our native pollinators and they are often visited by bumblebees and flower flies and honeybees will absolutely hammer them. Even though they do get a lot of use from foraging pollinators, I think I am gonna go ahead and put them in tier D. On, yeah, on second thought, I'm gonna put them between C and D. I think they rank just a touch higher than what their scorecard says. They do get a lot of use by pollinators early in the season. There are much worse plants that can pop up in your lawn. A lawn flower that is often confused with a type of clover is yellow wood sorrel, Oxalis stricta. While the leaves resemble those of white clover, they are not closely related. Yellow wood sorrel is native and is a host plant. It provides both nectar and pollen to native bees and other pollinators, but does not support any pollen specialist bees. Since it isn't invasive, it checks all but one box, so I'm gonna stick it in tier A. Are you starting to notice a pattern yet? By this point, you may be realizing that you are likely to have a mix of flowers pop up in your Lomo yard. Some great, some good, and some terrible. You may also be wondering how to manage a Lomo yard to make it better, or even to replace part or all of it with some more dedicated native pollinator plantings. These are exactly the types of things we discuss every day in the backyard ecology community. Think of it as a mix between group coaching and a support group where we all help each other to build better ecosystems in our own backyards. A big part of this is our private forum where you can ask questions, share cool observations, share your wins, and help other community members. But there is so much more to the backyard ecology community. You get direct access to me and Shannon, plus all of our other wonderful community members, some of which are doing truly amazing things with their properties. We also have two live virtual meetups every month where we discuss a timely topic and answer questions, have occasional awesome guest speakers, and as a community member, you may request an opportunity seat where we deep dive into a particular challenge you are facing and help you come up with an action plan for it. I will put a link in the description for those that want to learn more about the Backyard Ecology community and take the next step in their land stewardship journey. We have come to another non-native common chickweed, Stellaria media. This is a common plant in disturbed areas with high fertility soils and plenty of nitrogen. Although it is non-native and considered invasive in some areas, it is mainly a problem in agricultural fields and gardens due to its love of nitrogen. The small white flowers bloom early and provide nectar and pollen to native bees, honeybees, butterflies, and other pollinators. 
It is also a host plant for several butterflies and moths, including the chickweed geometer. Pollen specialist bees do not use it though. A couple of quick fun facts. Chickweed is edible and sometimes grown as a salad green, and it is loved by chickens, hence the name. Chickweed has a score similar to white clover, and I'm gonna put it there with it in tier C. Another non-native edible plant that will likely pop up in a low mow yard is hairy bittercress, cardamine hirsuta. There are many species of bittercress that may show up in your yard, but hairy bittercress is by far the most common. This is another winter annual, and the tiny early blooming white flowers are sources of nectar and pollen for native bees, including a pollen specialist, honeybees, early butterflies, and other pollinators. It is also a host plant for a couple of species of caterpillar. Overall, this isn't a terrible plant for pollinators, even though it is non-native. Bittercress can become a problem in ag fields and in degraded, highly disturbed sites, but it is not considered a major invasive problem, so I'll call it a draw when it comes to that. Hairy Bittercress scored pretty well, so I'm gonna stick it in the B tier. Before we get to one of the best lawn flowers out there, we need to discuss the elephant in the room. I've covered a lot of non-native species in this video. If you've watched the channel for any length of time, you know I'm all about native species, and you may be wondering why I've discussed so many non-natives in this video. Simple, they are what tend to pop up in numbers when you start to mow less. Your lawn is a highly impacted chunk of land, planted with non-native turf grass, and traditionally not managed for pollinators. When you lessen the mowing cycle, what comes up amongst the grass is going to be a mixture of plants whose seeds came in on the wind or were carried by birds, critters, and insects. In most settings, this will be a mixture that is skewed to non-natives for a variety of reasons it would take another video to cover. And while none of the non-natives I've covered in this video are things I would plant specifically for native pollinators, if all you can do for pollinators at this moment in time is lessen the mowing that you're doing, you're just gonna have to work with what you've got. As you have seen, some of the non-natives aren't too terrible, while others are things you wanna get rid of as quickly as possible. It comes down to the fact that a lawn with a mixture of native and somewhat good for pollinators and non-native flowers is still a huge leap better than a monoculture of turf grass. It is a good first step in your journey of making your land better for pollinators and wildlife. I hope this all makes sense. Let me know what you think down in the comments. And also, how do you like the tier list format? If you like it, I may do more in the future. And now we come to one of my favorite lawn flowers, the common blue violet, Viola sororia. This native wildflower is a pollinator powerhouse in a small package. Its blooms provide nectar and pollen and are visited by many species of native bees, including several pollen specialists, and they also attract early flying butterflies. The caterpillars of a multitude of fruit early butterfly species feed upon the foliage, most of which host on nothing but violets. As a native, it can't be considered invasive inside its native range. Another stellar performance by a native plant. Common blue violets check all the boxes and easily make it into the S tier. Another great thing about common blue violets is they stay short and look great even when not blooming. There are other species of viola that may show up in a lawn, but the common blue violet is by far the most common. I could talk all day about violets because they are just that awesome, but I already did a video about them, which you can watch right here. And be sure to get out and explore nature in your backyard.